I'm Cave Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, the daily comic book show where you get your fix of comic book and superhero goodness. And on this show, we're going to be taking a closer look at Spider-Man issue number 10. The wall crawler is going head to head with the Zodiac. What secrets will be revealed? Well, let's hop on in and find out. Alrighty then, everybody. So, picking up from where the last issue left off, Spider-Man is currently on the ground and at the mercy of Scorpio after falling to Earth from space for reasons that still haven't exactly been adequately explained. Our hero is broken, battered, bruised, and completely out of web fluid, which means the baddie pretty much mops the floor with him like it was going out of style. But before Scorpio can land the killing blow, two things happen. For one, the people of France rise up around Spider-Man to protect him, showing that he is a hero all over the world, not just in New York and not just in America. The other thing is that despite his protest, Scorpio gets called away by the two Geminis who are in the middle of making an escape at the moment. Elsewhere, we check up on that very mysterious villain in red who is going to be the focal point of the upcoming Dead No More event. He's already recruited two old Sinister Six members in the Lizard and the Rhino, and now he's gone out of his way to break Electro out of jail, even though Max Dillon no longer has superpowers. Anne-Marie and the Living Brain swing by Paris and pick up the battered Spider-Man, offering him a new costume and a ride to his next destination. This is kind of a funny scene because, as you all know, the Living Brain is currently housing the consciousness of Dr. Octopus. Doc's personality is beginning to shine through more and more now, and he even compliments Peter's body, saying it is the perfect vessel. The Zodiac have commandeered a train and are currently going through the channel, and if you ever wondered how the Zodiac managed to uh, get new members so quickly, well, now we know. Apparently those funny masks on their head completely rewrite the mind of whoever has it on. Spider-Man engages Scorpio above a moving train, and while the hero should be able to get one up on the bad guy, eh, Scorpio Scorpio isn't exactly dumb, and he knows Spider-Man will break off the fight if it means saving Anne-Marie or the train, so he causes a massive bit of damage on the track. Spider-Man is annoyed and livid that the Zodiac once again slipped through his fingers, and I know as the reader, that's kind of how I was feeling at this moment. Spidey hits upon the idea that to track the Zodiac and Scorpio, all he's going to have to do is track the very rare materials that exist within the Zodiac key that the bad guys keep carting around with them. Following that trail takes Spider-Man to the home of Mr. G. Jacobs, the largest shareholder in Parker Industries. Bun -da -da, but that would mean that Scorpio was Jacobs all along. Yes, Peter, that's exactly what it means. Good job figuring out what we as the reader knew multiple issues ago. After finding Jacobs' secret villain chamber, Pete has a conference call with all the other heads of Parker Industries to try and discern what exactly it is the Zodiac is up to. Not that he has to think for very long, because Scorpio shows up and just decides to share his villainous plan with him anyway. It seems that that the only reason the Zodiac has been able to stay one step ahead of Spider-Man and the other good guys for so long is because, well, they've been cheating. They are quite literally able to see one full day in the future. Oh, but it gets so much better. Jacobs further goes on to say the only reason Spider-Man's employer, Peter Parker's company, has been doing so well as of recently is because Jacobs has been cheating the stock market by looking ahead. Basically, think Biff Tannen, only, you know, of the business world instead of the sports world. When Scorpio threatens to bring down Parker Industries around the ears of the good guy, Spider-Man more or less says, bring it dude, you can destroy my company, you can destroy my assets, but you know what? Take away all those great things and I'll still be left with what makes me Spider-Man, my great responsibility. The Amazing Spider-Man number 10 was a lot better than the previous issue, it had a lot more focus going on and the events had a lot more weight. That being said, I would be lying if I said I'm not starting to get really fed up with this whole Zodiac storyline. Especially when they continue to hint and tease at the far more interesting story going on with the man in red currently, but we're going to have to wait till Dead No More to see where that stuff goes. There were a lot of little things to enjoy about this issue, like I mentioned before, the Dr. Octopus living brain stuff was funny and uncomfortable as it should be, plus, you know, any chance for Spider-Man to team up with Anne-Marie is always cool with me. Overall, I would feel comfortable giving this one a 7.5 out of 10. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video, I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer, or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you want to like or subscribe. And if you want to support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.